Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, a guide to art, culture and tourism in Tokyo. My name's Stuart Monroe and around this time from Monday to Friday, I'll be bringing news and views from Japan. And as the prospect of travel draws ever closer, I'll also note changes in travel as and when they happen. As wholesale prices in Japan jumped 9.5% in June from the year before, spurred on by surging import prices and the falling yen, Mount Fuji declared its summer season open to climbers, with an opening ceremony on the Shizuoka side. The opening ceremony was held on the 10th at the Asama Shrine in Fujinomiya City, by officials opening three trailheads. At each one, a swift procession of climbers gathered from 9am, at which point signboards and fences were flung open and summer area removed. In addition, an opening ceremony was held at Fujisan's Hongu Sengen Taisha Shrine, with roughly 100 people welcoming a bus carrying climbers, along with a congregation of priests praying for their safety. This opening ceremony, the first in three years, was reduced in scale to the coronavirus, but almost the same as normal, and the three trails on the Shizuoka side will be open until September the 10th, when the summer mountain season finally comes to an end this year. Elsewhere, elementary school students in Aomori City have created lanterns decorating the course of the Aomori Nebuta Festival, also being held for the first time in three years. The Aomori Nebuta Festival, which is one of the most colourful summer festivals across Japan, will be held from August the 2nd until 7th. A total of 80 lanterns were made and will be displayed in the Shimachi shopping district from July 23rd until August the 16th. And finally, as Tokyo bids farewell to one of its most iconic buildings, Kishio Kurokawa's Nakakin Capsule Tower from 1970, slowly being dismantled and torn out after years spent trying to save it, attention now turns to other buildings dotted throughout the city. Nakakin is probably one of the best examples during the mid to late 20th century that sought to realise architecture as adaptable and flexible. Ironically, it was the building's real lack of adaptability that was its Achilles heel. Ideas of a unitized building didn't ca quite catch on at the time, but now it's a different story, with prefabricated pieces assembled off-site, shipped in, then erected in situ. Most if not all new buildings rely on this pre-production, so in its own way the legacy of Nakakin as a kit of parts is more akin to the 21st century architecture and something easily overlooked while it's being slowly dismantled piece by piece and stripped of asbestos. Kodakawa's other buildings stray from the metabolism movement he and Nakakin so often associated with. On the surface, his Wako building in Kojimachi, for example, is more related to forms of postmodernism than to an architecture of function, looking more like an engine block than the headquarters of underwear manufacturer Wako, founded in 1949 by Koichi Sukumoto, who enlisted Kodakawa to design the headquarters in 1982. Towards the end of his career, his National Arts Centre building near Rapongi, opened in 2007 and lovingly referred to as NACT, takes cues from Nakakin and Wakol treating the interior like a series of moving parts, machine in nature, even without appearing so at first. And perhaps this is where metabolism is at its most evident. I thought that architecture is not permanent, he said, but rather something that grows, is expanded, renovated and developed. This is the concept of metabolism for me, to metabolise, circulate and recycle. That's all for now. I'll be back tomorrow with more news and views. If you enjoyed this episode, you might consider rating us on Apple Podcasts or think about letting other people know by spreading the word online. For now, thanks for listening. This has been Notebook. Notebook.